Hi guys, so in today's video, we're gonna go through the complete list of GTA 6 leaks. Now this video won't be speculation, this will be all based on what we saw last year with the gameplay pre-alpha footage that was leaked when someone hacked into Rockstar Games. Now of course I don't condone anyone hacking into Rockstar Games, but from that hack we do have information and being a GTA 6 channel, it's only right that I put together this whole video which breaks down every single leak that we saw from the pre-alpha gameplay. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing we can see is the changes in physics. So for example, when enemies fall or the player falls, they have better, more realistic ragdoll effects. This is very similar to what we saw in GTA 4, which I've mentioned in my other videos was way ahead of its time. So the next thing is the lighting and skybox systems. From what we can see, this is gonna be a more advanced version of the Red Dead Redemption 2 skybox and lighting systems, where we can see things such as volumetric clouds and more complex weather systems. Leading on to this is the heavy fog. So during the video of Lucia in a shootout with the police, you can see fog in the background and it's quite visible. This is something that we had in Red Dead Redemption 2, albeit it wasn't perfect, it was still leaps and bounds ahead of what we had in GTA 5. The closest thing we've had in GTA 5 is when we can see snow and there's some fog in the distance. The fog that we saw in the leaks was a lot more realistic. The next thing we saw in the leak is that character labels in the debug script were numbered based on the stage of the story. And so from this debug code that we can see that Rockstar is still using the world event criteria model which is basically when certain world events can't happen if certain criteria isn't met so for example if you are wanted by the police a certain world event can't happen in that instance and from the code that we can see the is player character or player Lucia or player Jason is wanted rule etc they are all the criteria that need to be met for certain world events to happen now the next is characters we've heard about Jason and Lucia obviously they've been at the forefront of a lot of people's depictions of GTA 6 but there are some other characters that were seen in the debug script. So one of the characters is a guy called Booby, who introduces a guy called Dre to Jason and Lucia in one of the cutscenes. We're not sure about what Dre's relationship is to Lucia and Jason in the game. Obviously, we don't know that, and that can't be predicted as of yet. But he's one of the characters. Next is Sam, Kai, Wyman, Billy, Tit, Zach, and RB Shaw. Such British humour, Booby and Tit. <laughs> we can also see there's some other mentioned characters, such as Vicky, Iris, and Shanice. And one of the mission icons that comes up on the mini-map, you can see the initials for someone called YJ. We don't know who that is yet, but I'm sure we'll find out. And of course, there's some other mentioned characters such as Danny, Iris, Chester, Dale, and there's obviously some lore and universe references such as Jay Norris, which in Grand Theft Auto, you know that you're in charge of uh, an aliving. But Jay Norris is mentioned between two of the character interactions. Now, what we can gather from what we've seen so far of Jason and Lucia, they're supposed to be the sort of Bonnie and Clyde style protagonists where they're supposed to be a couple together. I've got some information on the screen now. You can pause and read it if you want to. I don't want to comment too much on this because once again, without seeing the trailer and having more information from Rockstar, the leaks that we got don't really show you too much of the dynamic between Jason and Lucia, so it's not really worth commenting on. Next is the gangs that we've seen so far from the leaks. So we've got San For San, which is a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and we've got the Far Right Militia as another name given to a group within the event list. Now it's unknown whether they'll be like a big part of the story or whether it's one of those like in the wilderness gangs that you see. For example, in Red Dead Redemption 2, you had the clan, which were in theory a gang, but they didn't play a massive part in the storyline. Now, next is the list of items and tools. It's worth noting that the symbols you see on the screen aren't taken from the leaked uh, gameplay. These are just assigned to them to show you what they are. So what we've seen is an auto dialer, an immobilizer bypass, painkillers, trauma kit, food and drink, USB drive, binoculars, cut off tool, pool cue, golf driver, golf putter, golf iron, golf wedge, crowbar, torch slash flashlight, slim gym, tracker jammer, duffel bag, cigarette, backpack slash loot. So that's for the tools and items. Obviously we've got some weapons we'll get into in a minute. One thing I wanna say is there's definitely been a lot more emphasis on different other tools than standardized weapons. So for example, having all of these different golfing tools, that suggests that there is an element of the game where you'll actually be able to play golf because the need for having a driver and a putter and a wedge, that would tie into the fact that golf might be an element of the game because otherwise if it was just supposed to be a standardized weapon, it wouldn't be worth going into that much detail for. It's a very small element of the game. So I'm guessing there's going to be parts of the game where you can play golf a bit more advanced. One of the things that we can deduce from this list is that stealing cars is going to be more of a mini game within its itself. So for example, stealing more modern cars, having an immobilizer bypass and all of that sort of stuff says that as a player, you'll be more involved in the process of stealing a car rather than just opening any car door and getting into it. There's two sides to this. This could make it more fun. It also could make it a bit more of a chore. I'm not sure yet. It all depends how Rockstar implements it, but I'm really interested to see how that works. Next is weapons. Now, 
From the leaks we've seen a number of weapons used, there probably will be a hell of a lot more than this. But from what we've seen from the leaked gameplay, this is our best guess on what's going to be in the game so far. So we've got rocket launcher, AK-47, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt action sniper, molotov slash fire bottle, spear gun, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, hunter sniper, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, pump action shotgun, and as I said before, there'll be many more. I'm hoping we get chainsaws in this game as a throwback to GTA Vice City. That was really cool. It was a bit gory, so whether that will affect the age rating of the game, I'm not too sure, but I'm very interested to see. Now the next thing is to do with the weapon wheel and the way that you carry your items. So this is very much carried over from Red Dead Redemption 2. Obviously Red Dead Redemption 2 had many different ways that you could store items as well as your weapons. So you'd have an item list and a weapon wheel. And from what we can see, it looks like Rockstar implementing some very similar for GTA 6. So in RDR 2, you could store your guns and your items on your horse. And it looks like maybe you'll be able to do the same thing within the boot of your car or maybe in a duffel bag and also have limited carry. So, you know, you can't carry 30, 40, 50 guns at once. It doesn't make sense. So really interesting to see how that mechanic plays into the game. Open world activities. Now this is one of the things that I am extremely interested in because like I've said in my previous videos, I feel like GTA 5 got a bit boring. There wasn't a lot to do, especially when it came to if you just want to hang out like in one of the open world sessions with your friends. In GTA 4, you could play pool, you could play darts, you could do all sorts of stuff. Whereas in GTA 5, it was very limited. Some of the things that we can see are dice, which may be referencing casino or gambling style events, golf, fishing and races. I think golf and fishing will be really interesting, especially as we saw previously, there's a large list of different items you can carry, like different golf clubs and stuff. So maybe they'll put more into the mechanics of playing golf, which by the way, for me personally, playing golf in real life is boring but for some reason it's more enjoyable in the game probably because you don't have to chase the ball and of course there's other events as well like van shipment robberies and deliveries i don't really want to say too much about this because we don't know a lot they are events that appeared on the map within uh the leaks next is enterable buildings this is another one i'm interested in like i said previously and obviously i know a lot of people disagree with this and that's fine I wouldn't mind it if the map was only a little bit bigger if 90% of the interiors were explorable because all you can really do in GTA 5 is enter some buildings and drive around. There's not really a lot of different interiors to go into and having like full shootouts in skyscrapers would be really fun. So some of the buildings you can enter are the Malibu Club, Pawn Shop, Jack of Hearts Strip Club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments from a set of interiors. Now, there's like a big list of interiors and when you buy an apartment, you can choose the interior that's within the apartment and it's like a listed set. So they probably can't do any modification to those interiors yourself, which would be a really cool feature to actually make your own apartment. But there's a list of set of interiors that you can choose from. The next is laundries. Now, I think laundries is actually referring to money laundering because a lot of the laundry signs in the leaks had the little money icon in the middle which is like the universal symbol for money laundering which makes you think you can get your ill-gotten gains and put it into a legitimate business now the next thing is collectibles and one of the clips of lucia you can see one of the developers placing a cardboard box on the ground the box seems to have a circle icon on it indicating these boxes are lootable on the box debug text is written collectibles car parts but another thing which you can also see written is wyman car parts box generic used which may mean you can collect car parts for him this may also be related to another event called pg car fence the car part boxes have a classic logo on them this gives both wyman and jason a mutual interest in classic cars so this might tie into something else in the story where maybe you can steal classic cars um you can change some of the parts on them or work on cars and obviously a fence is someone you sell stolen goods to so maybe if you steal a classic car you can get money for the car and the parts so another collectible as well is hats and one of the leaked videos one of the main protagonists jason is actually messing around with a hat so that could be another collectible within the game now there's some brands that were leaked in the gameplay footage they're on the screen now you can pause the video if you want to have a little read through these aren't including the vehicles that are in the game these are just the brands that were seen in the leaks and of course we have some of the returning brands as well these are brands that we've seen in previous gta entries next is animals from the leaks we saw snake pythons Seagull, skunk, raccoon, alligator, boar, wading birds, squirrel, southern leopard frog, crayfish, lizard, skunk ape, pigeons, possum, whales, 
And on top of that, there's some possible animals which are horses, cows, deers, and, and bucks. I think horses will probably make it into the game. Knowing how much time Rockstar Games put into making Red Dead Redemption 2 so believable, having all of the horse mechanics laid out and ready to go, it makes sense for them to add horses into this. Next is new mechanics that we'll see in the game. So the mechanics of the game are more about how the characters behave and things that they can do and things you can make the characters do. So in GTA 6, you'll be able to walk whilst in cover, the ability to go prone, loot bags so you can grab stuff out of your loot bags and stock stuff in duffel bags, ability to drop and pick up weapons, under fire, covering your face with weapons or bats also works while crouching, self revival, so for example if you get shot or you get injured in the game you can revive yourself, very similar to what we had in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you could revive a horse, the ability to switch shoulders while aiming, grappling during fist fights which will make fist fights so much more fun in the game, I can't wait for that, buddy comms, buddy ping, cover mode and shooting from a car window and like GTA San Andreas free aim whilst driving cheat code. Next is an eagle eye system where Jason will be able to look round and items of interest will be highlighted such as jewelry saves and security cameras. That means that in a mission, if you have to like block out some security cameras, you could probably push a button and those items will be highlighted. Next is a weight and muscle system. Now, we're not too sure about this. This is unconfirmed. But in some of the leaked clips, Lucia looked different from clip to clip in terms of her physique. It could be that they're just models used for the pre-alpha testing of the game, but it looks like the character will be able to change their size, thickness, weight, muscle density, all of that, just by working out or eating healthier or, or eating worse. Now, next is the interaction between objects and people. So you can carry bodies, rob, threaten, and talk with NPCs during robberies and you can pick up items now this is really interesting because the carrying a body mechanic in red dead redemption 2 was really cool and i think it added a whole different element to the game where you could like tie someone to the back of your horse and drag them along being able to do something similar in gta 6 will be really fun especially on online being able to do all this stuff to your opposing players will be really funny next is new gameplay systems so money laundering as i mentioned previously fences selling stolen goods to a middleman purchasable businesses this is probably linked in with the money laundering thing but really cool that you could buy businesses robberies standard grand theft auto stuff vehicle discovery so being able to discover vehicles and new liveries and mods for those vehicles. Hacking, Lucia carries a tracker jammer, a mobilizer bypass, USB drive and an auto dialer. This could indicate that Lucia has some technical ability with hacking which could be useful in the game. The next is the ability to command your partner to do things during a robbery so you can make decisions on how the robbery goes. You can tell your partner whether that be Lucia or if you're playing as Lucia that could be Jason. You can tell them to do certain things during a robbery which just adds a whole different element of dynamics to the game. Now the witness system and police recognition system. So this is linked to the fact that Rockstar Games are putting a lot more time into their AI models. I reckon this is like a more developed version of the Red Dead Redemption 2 model where you can get recognized, you can obviously hide your face during robberies. And I think it just makes the whole police system a bit more interesting rather than having the police come after you for a certain amount of time and being able to hide by getting out of their local radar. It's pretty cool that there's an element of strategy to getting away with the crime. Sharing items, so Jason and Lucia can share items between them which is really cool so you can choose two different loadouts for both characters before you're doing a mission so you can swap those items between the characters during a game very interesting unlocking doors slash gates in one of the videos with jason in the san for san hood which is one of the gangs where he sneaks in front of the red truck you can see a door from an import garage building which you can see written door panel locked same as the garage door you can also see a gate where it's written door unlocked so certain doors may be locked or you may have to pick the locks you may have to use some gadgets or electronics to break into buildings or get through doors next is the new features so there's an improved ai system that's a whole video in itself so we're not going to go into that in this video but there's a whole improved ai system for npc police and all of the response units you can now surrender to the police during a robbery you can buy gumballs from gumball machines which i'm assuming will probably have a health implications so maybe if you buy a gumball it will boost your health back up or something like that your character's clothes can become dirty which could be really interesting because in gta 5 like you walk out of the water and then like a second later you're dry the hair and facial system so this is something that's probably been pulled over from red dead redemption 2 the fact that your character can change over a period of time which i think is really cool because it means that every time you play the game or every person that plays a game might have a different looking character or a different experience with their character eating and drinking from your inventory so you can grab food and snacks and stuff from your inventory it probably boost your health and the next is smoking so this is really interesting so this could play into the whole health mechanics the weight health fitness mechanic in the game so if you smoke too much maybe you can't run as far really interesting to see how they implement this the next is cop trap so there's a couple of events called cop trap in different locations there's a chance that you could be ambushed by cops so it could be like you break into a storage unit maybe there's different places around the city where you can break into and steal stuff just between missions 
and some of them could be cop traps. Now, next is a list of brand new features. The ability to play without the minimap. So this could be something to do with the fact that when you're driving in a car, the actual navigation might appear in a part of the screen. Uh, but also when you get on a bike, it might reappear. Really interesting to see how they're gonna implement this without it being weird or disorientating. The new police system. So time until cops are dispatched. So when you commit a crime, you don't immediately get a wanted level because obviously that's not realistic. So there'll be a certain amount of time from the person in the shop you're robbing, calling the police to the police actually arriving, creates a whole different element of strategy within the game when it comes to committing crimes. Uh, and a CCTV detection meter, which is really cool. The ability to restrain NPCs, that's really cool, being able to zip tie up NPCs the same way in Red Dead Redemption 2, you could like tie them up, really cool. Loot vehicles, so you can actually steal things from vehicles rather than just steal the vehicle. Limited weapon wheel, so being able to carry a limited amount of items, therefore making it a bit more realistic. Maybe you have a bigger duffel bag that can carry more items but just adds another element of strategy when it goes into doing a mission. Next is the advanced hijack car system. So for example, you can actually fail stealing a car. So it actually takes a bit more to steal a car, especially more expensive cars might be a bit harder to steal. It makes it a bit more of a challenge to steal cars, especially if you can sell those cars defenses. It means there's a bit more strategy involved in taking high value cars. More detailed car interiors. So this is something that I really wanna see. Like I'm personally a car nerd, I'm obsessed with cars. In one of the leaked clips, you can see that the sun visor is being adjusted, the seat position is being adjusted, the steering wheel height is adjusted. I think it's really cool Cool that you can just completely customize your car to your character's style to the way that you'd like the car to be i find that really really interesting so i can't wait to see what they do with the automotive side of gta next is improved vehicle damage and handling now this would be really interesting to see because in gta 4 the car crashes were way more realistic the physics involved in crumpling a car in gta 5 were really really crap in comparison to what we had in gta 4 in gta 4 the car physics were nuts so i'm hoping that we get somewhere a mix between the gta 5 of simplicity to drive a car but also the GTA 4 realism. Next is the menu for vehicle control so on the d-pad if you click left there's an option for quick options within the vehicle whether this means adjusting the seat or doing all the things that I spoke about before or whether that's a complete different menu we don't know yet. Next is car interiors now have working GPS and waypoints in the dashboard whilst in first person view. I really hope that GTA 6 can work with VR headsets because if it can that would be a game changer. Next is the option to enter the car in a passenger seat. Now, outside of missions with two players, I'm not really sure what the use of this would be, but it'll be really interesting to see how this is implemented. Next, we're onto the attention to detail section. There are more detailed events that happen within the world. You can find raccoons rummaging through trash cans and even stealing food bags. In a couple of videos, you can even see light shining through Lucia's ear cartilage, a nice return of detail from Red Dead Redemption 2. So in Red Dead Redemption 2, objects had variable density. So some items would be more opaque than others. And I think this is a really cool detail as it reflects a, a certain level of realism. Kneeling desired is included in the player pedestrian animation set, which means that like in RDR2, the player will constantly change their kneel position whilst crouching. More detailed interiors, so for example, in the jack of Hearts nightclub, there's dirt on the floor, and the interiors looked more used than lived in. Next, in the video in which Jason picks up the Sanchez from the shipping container, immediately when he gets on the bike, on his right hand, he grabs the brake before starting the bike. That is something that Rockstar didn't need to put in. And the fact that they put that in there just means that it's an extra bit of attention that someone at Rockstar has thought, let's add this in because it makes it more realistic. That's the sort of attention to detail which I find nuts and I really love. Also, in the same video, you can see the bracelets moving on his wrist. I've actually just gone through and watched that leaked video. Video and it is insane so cool oh at this point in the video i'm gonna say the reason why i haven't put the leaked footage in the video is that take to interactive will have my video taken down if not my channel so i can't put any of the leaked clips on youtube i did it in one of my earlier videos and i'm very lucky that hasn't been taken down but i'm aware this video might get more views and i don't want to risk it now, another thing is group interaction so in gta 5 a lot of the npcs walked around by themselves but in one of the leaked videos on ocean beach you can see a group of people taking selfies together which leads us to believe there's going to be some sort group mechanic simulation going on where people walk around in groups and also in one of the videos that's close by to ocean beach you can also see that wind behaves really realistic compared to other games the way wind kind of comes in little gusts and moves hair and objects it's way more realistic to what we've seen in other games including red dead redemption 2. In the video with Wyman at the motel pool, you can see that the chairs in the pool are destroyed and the water itself is swampy. 
The Ped Collisions Ruined Clothes event may suggest a more realistic collision system that also affects the NPC slash player's clothing. Next is audio within the game. So at the moment from the leaks we saw a lot of the music was actually licensed music from GTA 5. Main reason for that is that Rockstar don't want to license all the music for GTA 6 because that will draw attention to the music they are licensing for GTA 6. Now if we can get hold of all of this information, getting hold of publicly licensed songs be a lot easier. One of the songs that we did see in it was Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. That's not featured in any of the previous GTAs. Next is the sounds within the game and soundscape and sound design. So it's very clear that Rockstar have made more of a conscious effort to make the weapons sound more realistic. Now this is something that in GTA 4, I felt like the guns were a lot more realistic than they were in GTA 5. The guns in GTA 6 are supposed to be louder, more pronounced, and more realistic. So there's a couple of things on this list, and once again, you can pause if you want to read through. But there's a lot more attention to detail in the way that sound bounces off environments. So for example, sirens echoing realistically in the environment they're in and bouncing off walls and stuff, making sound behave more realistically. Next is transportation. So in one of the debug scripts, you can see an input, which is horse exit. And under it, you can see input vehicle exit. It. This could imply that there will be horses in the game, but this also could be Rockstar Advanced Game Engine elements left over from the Red Dead Redemption 2 game engine, so take that with a pinch of salt. Next is the Metro Mover, which is a monorail, and one of the clips of Jason, you can see him walking off a monorail. That could be something that they implement into the game. And there's some other details as well, so you can pause the video now if you want to quickly just read through these. There's a lot of other things that Rockstar Games have put a lot of attention to detail in, which is really cool. Now the next is vehicles. Now all the ones on the screen right now are existing ones that are in GTA 5 that have also been seen in the leaks on GTA 6. But that being said, I'm 99.9% .9 sure most of these are going to change. I think with GTA 6, with all the attention to detail they're going through, I don't think they just reuse old car models. But we also do have some new vehicles that we've seen in the leaks. Now these are to be confirmed. Some of them might be changed, some of them might be pulled completely. These are the ones that we've seen from the leaks so far. So you've got a Cadillac, a Chrysler, a Toyota Camry, an excavator, a Metro Mover, a hovercraft slash airboat, which I'm really glad they're bringing that back. There's also three models that were seen in the script, which was the Class Mamba GT, Transgressor, Vapid Riata Classic, which I'm assuming a Vapid Riata Classic might be a play on Miata. Mark 1 MX-5. I don't know. That'd be really cool if that's in the game. There's also a sand car event. The sand car is an actual off-road vehicle, a dune buggy that's designed for driving on sand dunes and other sandy terrains. Now, because the area around Miami isn't sandy, I'm assuming this is for use on the beaches. That'd be really cool. And here's some other vehicles that we're going to expect to see in the game. You can just pause the video if you want to have a little read through. Now, within the leaks, there was actually reference to position data within the game. So, so there's reference to almost coordinates within the game code. So people have pieced that together from different scenes to work out what part of the map that those particular leaks came from. So we have a generic overview of what the map and scale and size might look like. Now, a lot of the borders of the map are completely speculation here. Like this isn't accurate by no means, shape or form. There's just a couple of things in here which could be relevant and could make sense in the context of GTA 6. And in terms of some real world locations, here's a map of some of the real locations that we think Rockstar have pulled information from to create certain areas of the game. Now, one of the last things I want to talk about is the state of the game. So these leaks came out on the 13th of September 2022. And at that point, we generally get the idea that the game is most likely in a polishing and debugging phase, which means that the game, for the most part, in terms of aesthetically, it's pretty much ready. The last thing that they probably need to do with the game is just tidying up some models, licensing, designing maybe more cars, more interiors, all of that sort of stuff. So in the leaks, the game that they were running was actually titled game underscore win64 underscore bank release. Bank release is a debug build that aims at being feature complete, whilst beta adds on extra functionality and aims for being content complete. So everything that was in this leaked gameplay was pretty much a full build of the game, but there's other things that need to be added, such as storyline driven stuff, additional functionality, and maybe like skinning certain menus and elements of the game just to make it a bit more polished. And the last thing is the Python leak. So Python code is usually attributed to menus, not actual gameplay itself. So it's usually attributed to the pause menu and menu options. So from this, we can deduce that the color schemes for GTA 6 might be purple and white, specifically the menu, but I also think there'll probably be some pink and some like light blues in there as well because of the, the time 
time period in which Vice City is known for, which is the 80s. So I've just come back to this video after editing it all and uh, that was a long video to make. Thank you all so much for watching if you got this far. Please do consider liking and subscribing. I've only actually been making videos on this channel now for about six to eight weeks. I'm trying to grow my channel and I'm trying to make the channel monetized so I can actually start earning some money and buy a gaming PC so when GTA 6 comes out I can start making content, modded content and stuff like that. So if you do like, subscribe and leave a comment it does help the channel massively. Thank you all so much for your support so far. Nearly at 2,000 subscribers in eight weeks which is ridiculous. Um, yeah I don't really know what to say. Thank you all so much for your support. Massively appreciated. And that's all for today's video. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.